So we begin our focus this month on the endocrine system. And when I talk about endocrine system, I kind of the easiest way to explain that is we're talking about hormones, okay? So let's talk about a wellness approach to supporting our hormones. Hi, I'm Dr. Peter Minky. This is Minky Wellness. And the endocrine system is, uh, you know, uh, maybe a loose designation. We have a lot of different endocrine organs, okay, glands. Uh, and, and we're going to be talking about this, this series of glands that starts up in the head. You know, you might have heard pineal, hypothalamus, pituitary, and then we go to the thyroid, uh, and then we come down, and we could even argue, uh, you know, some, some other elements. So there's actually, so let me back up. When, when we're talking about endocrine system, like I said, mostly, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to argue with the physiologists on this. I'm just talking about what we, most of us understand the endocrine system to be is we're talking about our hormones, right? We want to have healthy, balanced hormones. How do we be well in the hormone category, okay? And so we, there are some things that we can look at that have to do with, you know, specific organs. Now, like I said, we've got a number of different organs that all kind of talk to each other. They all work together, but all of them, we're basically talking about hormones. We're talking about these glands that produce compounds that get put into the bloodstream and circulate throughout the body, okay? So right away, we can see that the importance of circulation in the hormone system or endocrine system is critical, right? We have to have good body circulation in order for our endocrine system to work. In other words, the hormones ha are in the bloodstream. Well, that means the blood has to get to the organs. So if I've cut off blood flow to certain areas, let's say I have, I've had a neck trauma and I've cut off blood flow uh, or reduced or impacted blood flow to my thyroid gland, my neck and the front of my neck, you know, I can take all the herbs in the world and all the supplements and all that, but if I don't have blood moving through my thyroid, it's not going to do me any good. So there's definitely a structural component, a, how, a body alignment and, and a scar tissue and tension component to keeping healthy in the endocrine system. Well, I think that's true for anything, which is why I've included that element in, our, every, in, in all of our discussions associated with these, this wellness approach to our body uh, and all these different body systems. So we're gonna follow our wellness strategy again. We're gonna talk about our, how do we use our wellness strategy to support the endocrine system. So our wellness strategy is stop poisoning. So we're gonna look at stop poisoning the endocrine system. Definitely some things we can do there. Flood the endocrine system with nutrients. Definitely there's, there's an element we can do for that. And then manage our stress. How does stress relate to the hormones? Well, uh, you know, our brain produces stress, that kicks in a whole hormone cascade. We definitely need to understand how that works and look at the consequences of that. But then there's the flip side. If our chemistry is off in our body, those hormones, those stress hormones feed back up and create stra stress in the brain. So sometimes we, you know, it's almost kind of, it's not, it's, I don't want to say it's not our fault, but the brain is responding, our stress level, our mind is responding to what's happening in the body. And I have direct experience with that, that uh, when I got my liver on track, which is why we've done liver already. And so if you're trying to get your hormones balanced and you're not, you haven't done some liver support first, uh, I highly recommend we kind of go back and do the order that we've done in our wellness strategy here. But uh, when I got my liver on track, my hormone issues, my, my uh, mood changed dramatically. Uh, and I had been really struggling with, uh, with having these, my system balanced, feeling really down all the time, being a very morose person. And when I, when I got my liver on track, opened up my liver with a liver cleanse, uh, and series of liver cleanses that changed my mood radically. And, and that changed my life because I had thought that that was just the way I was. I was just, that was what my physiology was like. Okay. So what I'm saying is when we talk about hormones and how that feeds back to the brain and how our mood is and how, and how we think and, and our memory and things like that are all kind of linked to this chemistry that's going on in the body. There's a lot of these things, a lot of, lots, a lot of stuff to consider. So producing or putting together a program that's going to cover all everyone's hormone imbalance issues, uh, you know, or, 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 or supporting in a wellness category, all the different elements of a hormone system is going to be challenging in one program. So I hope you understand that uh, we've, we've got all this background of our wellness, doing all these different well, uh, systems that we've already done uh, up to getting, getting up to this point, because we've taken, the design was to take out uh, some of these other complicating issues so that by the time we get to this point here 
of the of the the hormones which is very fairly complicated cascade of things we've we've narrowed down the field of what we need to work on and so as i put together the program uh which we'll discuss on a different video um the 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 program is designed to support each one of these organs so let's look at the organs let's look at the players what what are we working with here uh in the endocrine system okay so these are the hormone producing uh uh glands if you will and so we'll start here now this is this chart is the reproductive endocrine and exocrine so there's going to be a few more things on this picture that than what we're actually going to, to take advantage of okay so here we have the top of the chart with the pineal hypothalamus pituitary so we've got these brain uh, 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 glands they're not very big you can see so they, they don't you don't have to produce very much of a hormone to have a, a dramatic effect uh, it's true for both men and women. We've got the, the pineal gland that's responsible for the circadian rhythm, the day and night. Uh, usually refers, uh, or is, we think of the melatonin, right, to be the hormone that's you know, involved in that, the pineal gland. We have the hypothalamus pituitary. Those are involved in producing a lot of different hormones, but uh, most of it, it you know, we think of it as the growth hormone, right, the master uh, system that growth hormone helps us to repair, uh, helps our muscles to be stronger, helps uh, the, the whole system to, to uh, with growth hormone being, okay, we've got, we can be youthful, right? All these things are, are fall into a line when we have good growth hormone. We'll talk about how our diet, glycemic index, how if we are eating sugar all the time, it shuts down growth hormone production. We'll talk more about that. Um, and then we go down to the thyroid. Oh, well, I mean, we'll talk about circulation in the brain, right? We've got to have good blood flow, good, good, not just blood flow, but good uh, cerebral spinal fluid flow inside the head. Um, okay, so we go down to the thyroid. We a lot of attention. The thyroid gets a lot of attention. But again, if I don't have good circulation, then I can't produce, I can't get that hormone, the thyroid hormone. Actually, there's four different versions. So T1, 2, 3, and 4, they all have some kind of action. Uh, even though the only attention anyone gives is the T4. Uh, and so anyway, we've got thyroid hormone that's being produced. That's responsible for our metabolism. Our basic cellular metabolism is going to be in, involved in that. Uh, and that's going to link down to the pancreas, which is also an endocrine organ, uh, and it produces insulin. But again, if I've got abdominal surgeries, scar tissue that influences the circulation that gets to the pancreas, uh, or if I'm got I carry a lot of stress in the middle and I'm tight all the time in the, in the abdomen, uh, or if my posture is is all hunched over and I, I mean, I'm not getting you know I'm I'm getting a lot of strain across the neck, uh, or and and my posture is hunched that I'm I'm putting pressure down on my guts. Well, then I'm not going to get good flow, blood flow, and I'm going to have more likely have a weak pancreas or, or the weak effect of the pancreas. Pancreas can't get its insulin that's producing into the bloodstream and out to the rest of the body. Of course, the insulin is responsible for managing blood sugar or actually to tell cells to take up blood sugar. And we'll talk about how, again, diet and stuff are influencing that system. Um, then we go to the, the adrenal glands, which sit on top of the kidneys, okay? We've got the, uh, little, their little chickpea size. They, they produce almost all of our hormones that you talk about and think about that you know you hear about a lot of hormones being produced by the adrenal glands we'll talk a lot more about the adrenal system but, but main, mainly they're called adrenal for because they produce adrenaline uh, that's also known as epinephrine uh, and so you have an epipin uh, you know that that so epinephrine is that very stimulating adrenaline and epinephrine are the same um, they just were identified differently so they, they ended up with different names but they're the same compound it's produced by the adrenal glands. Uh, the adrenaline is the thing that, boom, you know, really pushes the system to wake up, uh, get the stress system going. And so if we're producing, if we've got a lot of stress, so I remember our wellness strategy, manage our stress when it comes to the endocrine system, very, very important to do that, okay? So because there's, there's gonna be those feedback loops, okay? If we continue to stress out and push on the adrenal glands and the adrenal glands get fatigued and weak, that's what they call adrenal fatigue, then we end up stressing out the thyroid because the thyroid has to take over or tries to take over to help with the stimulate the system. Then we go down to the, the, the final elements we'll talk about for women are the ovaries, for men the testes, um, and those are gonna be involved in, of course, the, uh, the endocrine release of, of what we consider be our sex hormones, right? Testosterone and uh, estrogen, progesterone. So, in, in the few, you know, women, they have a lot more, we have a lot more hormones to talk about. The, they're all those hormones, the, the men and women have the same hormones, 
uh, we just have them in different levels, okay? And so um, the, the testosterone is much higher in men, you know, progesterone and estrogen are much lower, but those are still needed at other functions. They're not just uh, involved in, in sexual development, they're involved in bone density, for example. Uh, and so we, we'll talk a little bit about those, how those things connect. Uh, calcium utilization, if we, I forgot the parathyroid glands, those are these little glands, four, four little glands up with the thyroid that are responsible for calcium utilization. So there's a lot of moving parts here, and there's definitely uh, uh, something we're going to talk about in each of these. It's going to be a little bit challenging to get a handle on how complicated this system is and then, and then find out what, what we're going to work with. But that's my job, is I'm going to pick out the important parts and have it in, in concrete little ways that we can work on this. But I want to point out uh, very carefully that we, that we talk about this wellness strategy of stop poisoning, stop poisoning the endocrine system. And this is where this becomes absolutely critical uh, because we talk about the pineal pituitary gland, uh, hypothalamus pituitary gland up here as the master glands. Well, the, the olfactory system, when we breathe in something, those, the, that compound, that odor, actually, the, the chemicals in the odor come in, and they, if they're small molecules, they actually penetrate into the brain. That's what the whole glue sniffing is all about back in the 70s, right? Uh, you, you get an effect, the brain actually gets saturated with these or, or aromatic compounds, and it's burning up the brain, causing a, a wooziness or whatever. And so th that was the what people, you know, the glue sniffing back in the 70s. Right? We had to we had to regulate modeling glue because you know kids were sitting there spending time glue, you know sniffing it. Um, so what I'm saying is, when we talk about a, a toxic uh, avoiding poisons. There are definitely some things that we need to be very careful with. And as we start to talk about using essential oils, this is where essential oil quality makes all the difference. We cannot expect to have a healthy endocrine system, a healthy hormone system, if I'm toxifying myself with synthetic fragrances that contain hormone disrupting uh, chemicals and they come straight into the brain through the aromatic system. So this is, a lot of people will say, well, okay, uh, you know, there's, there's some really good quality essential oils are a little bit expensive. I'm just gonna use the junky stuff in my diffuser use it to make my house smell good. No, no. A great way to disrupt your, your endocrine system at the top down, right? Get rid of all synthetic fragrances. That's that, that goes back to that very first, the very first month of our wellness program. You, that's the most important toxin to get rid of because it's messing up our, our, our sense of smell, which is the, our ability to, to read our environment at, at, you know, at, a, at, a, at a really intimate level. And then it's, it messes up, it has potential to mess up our hormone system if those synthetic fragrances contain phthalates and other kinds of hormone disrupting compounds that are totally synthetic, that do not occur in nature, uh, and, and so they should not be, we, we, we got to be very careful, excuse me, very careful with those. Okay, so there's going to be uh, more discussion on that. But that's basically what we're looking at here with the wellness approach to balancing the hormones. I know that the endocrine system and hormones, I'm, I'm using those words interchangeably, that's what most people are going to understand that's the basics of what we're talking about. We're not going to have the time to go through every single little nuance associated with it, but these are the organs we're talking about here, the going from the top down, and we'll experience, get some tools that we can work with with each of these. We've got our supplements and oils that we're working with. The idea for the supplement oil program was as a bit of a, let's get each, let's get something uh, helpful in each of these categories that help uh, each of these major organs. Uh, and so that's the design. If we do that all at once for a month and get the whole hormone system on track, we're going to find ourselves in a much better place. The idea of this wellness program is to be more well at the end of each month for that body system. And then at the end of the year, after going through 12 body systems, we'll be more well than we were when we started. Is it going to solve all of our problems in one program, in one portion of one month? No. Okay, so just keep that in mind. The intention here is to make a concerted effort that gets us in a real way in a step forward. Okay, so we're going to be taking this one day at a time. That's what wellness is, one day at a time. Hang in there. We're going to get started to work with our hormones. Happy wellness.